What's up guys, Justin here from thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp and V-Ray tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to talk about adding surface imperfection maps to objects in our renderings in order to make them look more realistic. So specifically in this video we're going to use maps from the website polygon.com. Um, you may remember I did a video last week on importing materials from polygon.com into your models. And I will link to that down below. The textures in this tutorial are all free textures that you can be downloaded that you can download from polygon.com. There are also other maps that are paid that are also really high quality, things that you can also apply to your models to get better results. I will note that I have received a month of a free membership at polygon.com, but again, these are all the free resources that you can get in there. You don't need to buy anything in order to follow along in this tutorial. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if you remember last week, we talked about downloading and installing those textures from polygon.com. And I'm in the free texture section right now. You're gonna have to create a login in order to download that. But one of the things that's contained on this website, which is really cool, is what's called a surface imperfection map. So what a surface imperfection map is, is it's basically a map that you apply over top of your materials to make it look more used. Because a lot of the time what happens is actual materials and renderings, when we render them, they look a little bit too perfect and they make your renderings not look perfect or they make your renderings not look realistic because they're so perfect. Well, what these do is you can apply them over top of your materials in order to give them that more used look. And so in this case, we're going to go in and you're going to download the Smudges Large 001 texture. And you're going to go ahead and get both overlay versions. And then you're also going to download the Tiles Rectangular Mirror Gray 01. And so you're going to want to make sure that you download all the displacement maps and the gloss maps and everything as well. And so once you've done that, we're going to take those and you're going to want to unzip those so that you can bring them into SketchUp. So once you do that, I've opened up my V-Ray Studio file and I will link to this video in the notes down below. This is basically our studio that we put together to test lighting. What we're going to do in this case is we're going to model a face with this tile material on it and then we're going to apply the surface imperfection map. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw basically a box and we're going to put all of that in the group and that's just what we're going to apply our material to in this case just something with thickness it doesn't have to be anything special um, especially for what we're doing here which is just demonstrating the functionality and then once we've done that we're going to go into V-Ray so when you go into V-Ray you're going to click on the asset editor and we're going to go ahead and start bringing some materials in so to start off we're going to add a new material so you're going to come down and click on the add material and we're going to click on a generic and we're going to go ahead and add in everything from our tiles rectangular mirror and I will link to the notes down below on actually linking these up and um, we're basically just going to add all of our different maps in here and I talked about that in the last video for the sake of speed I'm not going to go through it in depth in this video and when we apply our maps Go ahead and apply the normal map 16-bit and the displacement 16-bit. Um, and in the case of the normal map, make sure you set this to rendering space linear. That's going to make a big difference in the way this looks. And so once we do that, we'll go ahead and we'll apply this to our object. So in this case, I'm going to apply it to the outside of this group. So I'm just going to click on this group and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to click apply to selection. That's going to apply this material to your selection in here. One thing you probably want to do is go ahead and name this. So I'm just going to right click and I will just rename this Polygon Tiles. So one thing you're going to notice when you do this is this comes in really small because a lot of these were originally made for more like 3ds max or something like that well in this case we're just going to make this bigger by coming into the materials section and just adjusting this over here so i'm just going to adjust this up to 10 feet you can see how that's going to resize this and so at the moment our materials on the edge here um, look a little bit weird we're just going to kind of ignore that for right now um, we may do a different tutorial about that we're going to focus specifically on this face for the moment all right so when we run our interactive render you can see how this looks really realistic it looks really good so for the next part what we need to do is we need to apply our smudges material to this and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new material and 
there's a very important step in here that we need to do and I'm not really sure how to demonstrate it without taking you down this road a little bit first. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down this road, I'm going to show you how to apply this and then we're going to go back and I'm going to show you the really important step which is your UV mapping. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our smudge material. So in order to do that you're going to come over here to add material, you're going to click on this and you're just going to select another generic material. And what we're going to do is we're going to add this material in here. And so in order to do this, what we do is we turn our diffuse or our color to white. So this is basically a white material at the moment. So if we were to apply this right now, it would just be a solid white color in our material. So what we're going to do in this case is we actually use this, uh, we use this imperfection map as a map to adjust the opacity. So what that means is this is basically going to adjust where you can see white through here in order to create your smudges. So to do this you're going to go into your opacity, you're going to click on the box over here and you're going to go down and you're not going to select bitmap yet, you're going to select color correction. So we're applying a color correction to this material and inside the color correction there's going to be a little box over here where you can click on this and apply your imperfection map. And the reason for this is this allows us to adjust the brightness and the contrast of the material that we're applying here to adjust the way that this looks. So to do this you're just going to come over here and click on this box and I will know I'm in V-Ray 3.6 so if you're in a different version this may look a little bit different. But then once we've clicked on that box, that's when we're going to add the bitmap. So we're basically telling it that we want to apply an image to this in the color correction settings. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to select this overlay variation one. So when we click on this, you'll notice this comes in super white. And so if we go back and like let's say for example that we were just to do an interactive render with this right now. It's kind of hard to see so I'm going to hide my background. So I'm going to right click on my background and just select hide. But now you can see that this is basically giving you, it's tiling this imperfection map in here over and over and over again. But you can see how it's super, super small. So that's not really what we want but it does give you kind of an indication if I really zoom in you can kind of see the repetition of this in here. And uh, so the first thing we want to do, and the reason I wanted to show you this is because the tiling is an issue. And I've seen people recommend that you change the UV map on this, and that does work, but it creates a lot of different issues. What we're going to do instead is we're actually going to use the, uh, or the UV map of the actual uh, image that we've applied in here. What we're going to do instead is we're going to adjust the world mapping in here. So to start off, I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to reapply my polygon tiles texture to this. So I'm just going to select this, I'm going to right click and I'm going to apply this to a selection. So basically we're just putting this back to what it was before, which is the tiles. And so if you remember, what we did is we came in here and we adjusted the size of this material so it's in here properly. So if I click on this 10 foot, or I adjusted this to 10 foot by 10 foot to size this properly on my face here. Well now, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this and we're going to go down to the V-Ray UV tools and we're going to click Triplanar Projection World. So when we select that, that's basically going to project this material onto this object. So now if I go in here and I um, apply, if I go in here and I apply, apply my default material to the outside of this group, you'll notice how this is showing no materials but then it's still rendering with the tile. That's because this has come in here and it's actually projected this on this face. But it's also, in V-Ray's mind, it's now mapped all of your different materials. So now if we stop this render, and we go back in and we reapply this. So if I click apply to selection, first of all, you're going to notice that because all the materials are inside the group, it doesn't matter what we apply to the outside of the group. If I was to render this, this is still going to show up as tiles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to do a control A to select all of these different materials. So you can see I have all the different materials in here. I'm just going to apply this generic material back to this. Um, so now we've only applied a material to the outside of this group, not the inside. And so if we rerun this render, now we've applied that surface imperfection map in here. You can see how now 
if I look at this, it's actually sized properly in here. So you can see how you can actually see the individual smudges. That's because we did our UV world map. Now V-Ray has basically determined the actual size of this object so you don't have v, uh, UV issues in here anymore. So if you have questions about that, leave a comment below. It's a little bit confusing, but it works great. So now what we're gonna do though is we're gonna go back into our opacity map for our material. And we'll go ahead and rename this Polygon Smudges. And so what we wanna do is you can see how this isn't very see-through right now. And uh, so to give us kind of a background, I'm gonna go ahead and unhide my background that I had in here before. You can see how this isn't very transparent right now. It's very opaque. And so what we wanna do is we wanna go back into our opacity map and we wanna adjust the brightness and the contrast. You can see how this image is super bright right now. Well, basically this is an indicator, wherever it's white, you're gonna have like full on materials. Where it's dark, you're not gonna display as much material. And what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna drag this slider down. So you can see how as I drag this slider down, your smudges are becoming more pronounced. So you can see how I can make this uh, darker and you can see how my image is changing inside my interactive render as I do this. And then in order to adjust um, how transparent or how opaque these materials are in here where they're more white, you can also adjust the contrast. So you can adjust your contrast down and you can see how as you adjust your contrast down, this is getting less and less opaque. So you can use these two sliders to adjust the way that that's going to look. And so now, we have a material in here for our smudges. We have another material in here for our polygon tiles. Now we need to create a third material where, they, where we blend them together. So first of all, I'm gonna stop my interactive render. So I've, I've had some issues. If you start creating blend materials while your interactive render is running, I've had this lock up and crash on me before. So usually I stop my interactive render until after I've done this. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save my model and then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna add a third material. And in this case, this is gonna be what's known as a blend material. So a blend material is a V-Ray allowing us to take multiple textures and blend them together. So if we click on blend, that's gonna create another material. We'll go ahead and rename this one smudge tile combination or something like that. You can really name it whatever you want. And we'll go ahead and we'll apply this to our selection. So you can see how the first thing you may notice is when you apply this to your selection, this doesn't look like anything. It basically gives you a V-Ray placeholder in here. So your V-Ray placeholder in here is just showing you, yes, there's a material applied. There's just nothing in SketchUp that allows you to show a combination of two materials in here. So it's just telling you that you have a material applied in here. You can see how that name shows up in the material section of your tray. But what we wanna do now is we wanna add a base material. So the base material is gonna be the first material that's in here. In this case, we're gonna select the polygon tiles. And you can see how that shows up now in my preview over here. And if I was to come over here and run my interactive render, this would just look like the tiles. So you can see how your tile material has been applied in here. And so, so far, this is really nothing special. What we need to do is we need to add in our overlay material. So I'm gonna stop my interactive render and I'm gonna click this button up here for add coat. And so when I add my coat, what this is gonna do is this is gonna let me add something else that's on top of this material. So in this case, I'm just gonna come up here and I'm gonna click on my polygon smudges layer. And so if you look, this is actually gonna update over here so that it has the smudges applied. If I rerun my interactive render, watch what this material does. So you can see how now, and it's very subtle. A lot of these imperfection maps are very subtle, but you can see how right now, these tiles aren't reflecting the same way that they were before. So if we zoom in a little bit, you're gonna notice that these look more smudged. You can see how they've got little fingerprints on them and uh, the different smudges that you have applied in here. And one thing that's really important when you do this is since we UV map this, we don't have to adjust our sizing. So what used to happen is it was kind of 50-50 on the way this came in. You'd have to go back inside these and readjust them. Um, so you can actually adjust 
the individual materials just by clicking on this little settings button right here for edit, edit selected material. But you used to have to come in here and adjust the UV mapping. Now you don't have to do that anymore. But what you can do is let's say we want to adjust the way these smudges look. You can click on this edit selected material and go into your opacity map and you can adjust this up or down. And as you adjust this up or down, what you're going to notice is you're going to get more and more pronounced a more and more pronounced effect in here as you adjust these different settings. So you can see how I can make my whites whiter and my darks darker by adjusting my uh, brightness and my contrast. So if I turn my contrast down, you're going to get less overall effect applied to this. Where if you turn your brightness down, you're going to get more uh, you're going to get basically more difference between the areas that have the smudge and the areas that don't. So, and again, this is a very subtle effect. So you have to kind of play around with it a little bit to really get the effect that you want. You can see how you can make this more grimy the more you turn this up. So once you kind of start getting these in here, and once you get everything mapped properly, you can start playing around with the way that this looks. So leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. I'm really excited to play around with these surface imperfection maps more. I'm really excited to see what we can create. But as always, I'd love to hear from you what you thought of this tutorial. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.